there are things people don't tell you about getting older. And it's not like there aren't people older than me and people older than you. But some things that are difficult to deal with, there's no preview of coming attractions. You just have to figure it out on your own. One of the things that's been surprisingly difficult for me has been the loss of long-term friends, people that I've known and been close to for 30, 40, or more years. I didn't think this was going to be as difficult for me as it's been. After all, in the 1980s, I had lost an awful lot of people in my life who died because of AIDS. But that was different. Part of what happened during the AIDS crisis was that those of us who were losing lots of people we knew had a community around us, people around us who recognized the experience, were supportive of each other, and helped us move through that bereavement. And some of those people are long-term friends of mine now. But as I lose people who have been friends for decades, it's been a very difficult challenge for me. As I talk about that, why don't you subscribe to this video, to this channel, as well as uh, click the bell. In the video, Lost Bereavement and Grief, I talk about a concept called disenfranchised grief. Disenfranchised grief is a term that was coined by researcher Ken Doka. Disenfranchised grief refers to grief that isn't recognized by other people. People don't really see what's going on in terms of your grief and your bereavement. That's really true whenever a long-term friend dies. Think of the way we connote friendship. We say things like, well, it's just a friend or we equate friendship with the connections we have on Facebook or other social media. So those kinds of, of connotations minimize the role of friendship in our life. But people who have been our friends for 30, 40, and 50 years are people that we've chosen and they've chosen us to be together, to stay together, to stay connected. And it's different from other long-term relationships, like the relationship with the spouse. With the spouse, there are many different roles that people play for each other. But with a friend, there's just really one role, to be a friend. And as a friend, we share our stories, we do things together, we have fun together, we're there for each other when we need each other to be there, when we need support. There's something unconditional about friendship. And so it becomes a very unique kind of relationship, especially when a close friendship endures for decades. And when that friendship is lost, it isn't just that the person has died. Instead, there's so much of life that's been shared that, that just seems to fade away. You know, if I'm talking with my friend Grant who died, if I would have been talking with him before he died, and talked about some of the road trips we took. We would go off for a day. Sometimes we would fly into a similar part of the country and just hang out for a week and drive around. We could share all kinds of stories and adventures and it was like we were doing it all over again. But for me to tell someone else about that, it just doesn't seem real to them or it's just sort of a story that's nice. The same is true with my friend Kathy who passed. We were grad students together and knew each other for decades. We shared so many th parts of our lives together over that time as, as we grew into professional roles and did many different things. But we also spent lots of evenings talking about life and what we were doing and, and drank far more scotch than anybody should. But that was part of our friendship. And it's hard to convey to someone else what that means. So those stories go from being in full color when the friend is alive and you can share with them to sort of becoming a monochrome when you're talking about them once they're gone. And the thing is with that monochrome is that it also begins to fade over time. You have the memory, but it's sort of a distant memory. 
it doesn't have the vitality it used to have. Understanding loss, bereavement, and grief helps to navigate the process. It's good to know stages or phases or what to expect. And we often understand those things through having had other significant losses. So it's good to know some signposts about how we process through bereavement. However, knowing those things doesn't make the pain less. It doesn't take away those feelings that we associate with the person being gone. It doesn't mean that we miss them any less. The only way I know how to move through that dimension of the loss is with my spiritual practice. And that's, of course, no surprise to you. It's really in meditation that I find that I'm able to step through the feelings and get to another place. It's when I take time to allow myself to be quiet on the inside and on the outside. And whenever I go into that inner space that I find a sense of peace and a sense of wholeness, that I'm able to remember what Teresa of Avila meant as she talked about all things passing. It's true that what the Buddha said, all life is impermanent. But I understand that passing quality of life, that impermanence, best through the sense of popular Taoism, I'll call it, that phrase we throw around to go with the flow. But in Taoism, what going with the flow really means, it captures a whole broad image. The Taoists understand that life is like a flowing river. We are in the river and the river is in us. We can try to stop the river, but that doesn't work. We can try to stand still on the river and cling to a rock to stay in the same place, but eventually we can't hold on. We can try to go upstream, but the current is working against us. And so wisdom is allowing the river to flow through us and around us and to take us on life's journey. And while we're on that journey, there will be times as we're going with that stream, going with the flow, that there will be people and places and things that will be right there beside us. But the flow changes a bit and some of those things and places and people will go off in a slightly different direction and we'll be going on our own way. But if we go ahead and allow the, the river's flow to continue to take us along, it will take us to something new. It will take us along the current of our life. So that's what I hold on to, that yes, all things are passing, but that as they pass, I'm going with the flow on that flow of the river to something more, to something new, to something I haven't experienced before. And I believe that that's a good thing. Be sure to leave some comments about your own experience of grief and loss. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with others because other people are experiencing this. And as I said, we're never warned about this in advance. Most importantly, know that I really appreciate the time you take to just watch the video and to reflect with me on some things. Have a great day.